Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're gonna to be diving into some more of the advanced parts of Astro Sorcery. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today we're diving back into Astro Sorcery, and I have to say, I am really enjoying getting back into this mod. It has been quite a while since I've kind of played around with it, so, uh, and this new update has been really fun. Like, I'm actually really enjoying, uh, like, mapping out all the constellations and doing all that stuff, but today, you may be able to see from over here, we're going to be doing a little bit of a entunement. Um, and the attunement is honestly one of the best things about Astro Sorcery, at least I think so. Um, attunement gives you a whole perks tree, similar to like Path of Exile or Dota, how you have a, a giant perk tree. You're going to see that perk tree here in a second. It kind of adds a whole other element to Astro Sorcery in itself. And that perk tree will be found here in our book. Um, it's pretty powerful and can become just as OP as just about any other mod. So keep that in mind. And plus with combinations of other mods, it's going to be pretty powerful <laughs> as we progress through. Um, so how do we get started with that? Well, I need to go ahead and actually craft one of the things. So let's dive into astral here and we are going to be making ourselves an upgraded altar. Um, and we're also going to make ourselves an attunement altar. So the attunement altar is going to require a crystal. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of crystals because we're going to need those as we go. So Astro Sorcery and the Attunement Altar. So Attunement Altar ready to go. Let's go ahead and slap that with our wand. Get that made. We're going to see some nice fancy particles. Like the more, uh, the, the higher tier we go in making stuff, the cooler the particle effects really get. This is honestly one of the, one of the cooler ones. And... Where'd it go? Is it in my inventory? Oh, it's in my inventory. I forgot I had my magnet on. I can normally just pops up on the thing. I need to turn that off. All right. So how does this doom and altar work? Well, we need to place this right in the center of this massive uh, platform. Now, the best way to build this is to build a 17 by 17 uh, area square of sooty marble. Then go ahead and surround it because it is a 19 by 19 structure. So keep that in mind as you're building this. And finding the center is not horribly difficult. And I believe that is the center of this structure. Um, now, a good way to know if it's the center is you can go ahead and go into your book, open up your uh, constellation papers, and put this in your offhand. And if that constellation is out, you should be able to see this light up. I'm gonna make sure that I actually built this thing properly. I know why it wasn't working. I always do this. Uh, I, th I basically, I look at it and I see 19 by 19 and I think that from here to here is 19 by 19. No, no, no. From here to here is 19 by 19. So I made it technically out one too wide. So yeah, I, I have to kind of shrink it by one uh, or by two on, on the side. So yeah, this actually should be more like a 15 by 15 square of uh, sooty marble and then on the outside take your uh, your marble arches and build around and now it will work once we get it all set up so once you have the structure right you will see these little white particle effects now don't mind these particle effects because you really won't see those just yet but i do want to show you what these are so depending on what thing you want to attune you're going to want to put that constellation paper in your off hand um, i believe you can hold it in your main hand but you have to have it in a hand when you place it, and it's easier to have it in your offhand. Now, however, I do want to show you inside of our astral tome. Um, of course, you can shift right click to store those. But if we take a look at constellations, it's going to tell us a little bit about those constellations once we've kind of mapped them out. And so I have all of them now mapped out, all of them, the base five. And Amara, I think, is the one that I want to do the most. It's one of the easier ones, I think, to kind of level up. And that's defense. And I think you just need to take damage on this one. Um, and we're gonna talk about the nodes. So I want to attune myself to this. So the moon is up there, we're looking pretty good. Now, as you can see with um, this in my offhand, uh, all I need is my astral relays and I just place them on the node that's right, right here. And this is the last one. So once I place this, you will see it connect. And it'll also play some really pretty music. And so all I have to do to attune myself is to hop in.
Wow. I am really loving the upgrade to this. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. So, we are now attuned. That's pretty wicked. Like, the music, everything. Oh, man. And so now we have a perks tier. And we also have this bar that's over here, which is... Everything's kind of blending in over here in this corner. But this bar only shows up whenever we level up. So let's take a look at our perks. And if I zoom out, this is the perks tree. Like I said, it, re it definitely resembles like Path of Exiles and I believe Dota kind of works in a similar way. Yeah, it's it's yeah, definitely a perk tree. And I believe this one right here, 20% more armor, gain experience by taking damage. So yes, this is the one that we can just basically take damage and we're good to go. We will level up from literally taking damage from anything. So cactus, for example, I think we can just take damage from a cactus. Um, that's one of the ways. So let's grab some sand. I don't think this is a fast, like a super fast way to do it. But like if we place this and we just stand here, I think over time we will eventually level up. Um, or we can just stand in a mob farm and just let the mobs hit us. Uh, however, we're not losing any health. And I almost wonder if that's because I need to actually lose health in order to get this to work. So maybe like taking off some of our armor would help. I don't actually know. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of testing to see if we can lose health. I know this kind of isn't helping with our health loss. So in this perk tree, we now have, uh, we have four points available as of right now. And I have been leveling up even though the bar hasn't really been showing up. I don't know if it's because of the overlay, but as you can see, I am taking damage. And so each time I take damage, it is increasing my level there. And those points I can use to spend on this perk tree. Now, there are a couple of nodes that are definitely better than others. Um, there's even some nodes down here, like this one, I believe. Yes. So the Visio Mantle now grants flight instead of elytric lighting. So this basically takes the mantle, um, which you would normally use to get flight, some sort of flight. It's more like an elytra. And uh, instead, you will get regular creative flight. Now, I don't really want that. But there are some other perks that I would definitely love to get. And all we have to do is take damage to get them. Pretty crazy, right? So I could set up an easy, like, let's see, wall here. Turn this bad boy up to like, I don't know. Let's see, it go even faster. And all I got to do is like create a little wall here to keep myself from getting knocked back. And so I'm just basically taking damage over and over again probably speed it up even more and this right here is going to level me up so in my perks tree of course i can kind of i need to look through here and see what i really would deem probably some of the best stuff like anything that's going to help with defense is probably going to be pretty good oh my gosh i just made an advancement called it's a start so i think i've kind of hit a a point here where i'm, I'm not even taking any damage anymore um so let's take a look at the perk tree and what i've done um, so I had 21 levels so far, and it's kind of hit the point where it's starting to really slow down and we don't really gain as much. What I have set up here is just kind of encompassing the, the damage reduction section. Um, so right here, we can uh, choose a gym. Right now, we do not have a gym, so I can't socket the gym, even though I will socket a gym once I get, that, uh, get the gym. Um, but right here, we have resilience, add one armor, plus five, or increase 5% 5 to our maximum life. Um, Basically, these are things to help our resistances. And also this one right here, 5% of melee damage taken is reflected to the person who sent it. Um, I don't really want this one. Take 30% less damage while wearing less than two pieces of armor. I really don't want that. I just want all of the resistances that come with all of these skill trees. However, these dodges, I definitely want as well. That's something that I'm going to be working my way towards as we unlock more. Eventually, we should be able to. Um, just at the moment, like I may even have to reset my skill tree, which is a thing that we're actually working towards getting in the first place, is one of the stars. So, this right here is pretty powerful. As you can see, I'm not taking any damage. Uh, actually, I think the sword is in, in here is broke. Um, let's grab another sword. This one's even enchanted. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of damage. And maybe that's probably what I need. 
Yeah, it, that'll de well actually, you know what? We could probably level this up even further. Oh, I just I've totally forgotten that the sword is broken. So I want to test something out to make those gems. I've never really kind of played with those. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make myself some uh, illumination powder, and this is supposed to be the recipe that we use in order to make those gems that go in those sockets. So if I activate this and I utilize this uh, starlight over here, um, we should be able to throw a rock crystal. I believe, and a piece of illumination powder in here. And that has a chance of generating a cluster. You can see the light. That does mean it's working. Um, and I don't know if it's uh, different, like the gym types are different each time. But I was reading up on this. Um, and yeah, it does tell us a little bit about this. Forms day, night, or during dawn and dusk. The time of growth will change the type of gym created. Kind of cool. And it talks about the different gems and have mo more potency in their aspects. Okay. So right here is a gem. It's a crystal cluster. And I guess it will just grow over time, similar to how some of the other cr uh, crystals grow. Um, so also, let's go ahead and grab a bucket. And I'll show you some of the other crystals that we definitely need to grow. Um, let me go ahead and place this. And we'll get this here. And another one is like a rock crystal. All right, let's go to astral. So we can just grab a rock crystal. Let's see if we can find one that looks kind of nice. Tool, like this one has a high tool efficiency, durability. Um, collection rate. I don't really know too much about any of the, the new stuff that's listed here. I'm going to go with this. And then Stardust. Now, if we throw these two things in... This will create another type of gem. And there we go. We have a celestial crystal now. So this right here will also take some time to grow, but it will turn into that blue variant. So uh, I believe there are some recipes that we're going to actually need this. Now, taking a look at how we're going to actually upgrade our altar. This is going to be moving forward into our next step, and that is going to be needing just this stuff right here. Very, very simple. Um, we have all of that stuff in our inventory. So let's go ahead and kick that over. There we go. And remember, do not upgrade this yet. Upgrade it after you've done this. Otherwise, you're going to be like, oh, man. And then you have to rebuild it because you won't be able to craft this thing. Um, so chiseled marble. Let's see. I wasn't able to throw that in there. There we go. I think that's all we need. And an attuned rock crystal or just a regular rock crystal. Okay. So yeah, it won't let me put it in because of how that was facing. You see our, our time is of course running out, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this prepped up and then we're gonna, we're gonna make the next tier. So it is now the next day, our recipe is ready to go. And this one's actually kind of pretty as well. I like the upgrades um, and the transitions. They get cooler and cooler the, uh, the further you go. Okay, so now this one's up updated or upgraded to the next tier, Celestial Altar. However, also notice it is red now, which means we now need to upgrade this. So if we go into attunement and we go to the altar, which is all the way up here, we're going to notice we have a new build that we need to build in order to do really anything with this. Luckily, it doesn't get a whole lot bigger than this stage right here. Like it gets taller, but it doesn't actually get any like wider, I don't think. Nice thing is about this setup is I didn't even have to move these things. They were already ready to go. So... Um, it kind of shows that it doesn't really get much bigger um, than the original platform that is set up. Uh, however, like I said, it is going to get a bit taller. Now, um, our starlight, like at the moment, I don't know how much we're going to have, but if we do need more starlight, we can always link this directly to the table, and that will grant us a bit more starlight. And I think we can even just focus this. Instead of moving this, we can just focus this directly into the table as well. It'll probably grant us quite a bit of starlight. I don't think we're going to really need much because of this big old crystal we have here. So while I'm working on one of the altars uh, that was a little bit different, this is the Starlight Infusion that I'm getting ready to make. And I wanted to go ahead and get the altar built before I place it, but I noticed the altar has changed since I had last seen this. And this was usually an altar that I kind of dreaded making. And uh, it's similar to the upgraded on, upgrade on this. You kind of have to place like almost like floating blocks. And so you end up breaking and placing a bunch of blocks. This makes it a whole lot easier. Like this altar is not the way it used to be, which is awesome. Like I, I like this. So as you can see right here, this is uh, basically the whole altar setup. Um, and there we go. I think that's the exact setup. We have a lapis block, 
everything that we need is here. Now, the only thing that this gets is Liquid Starlight that goes in all of these spots. That's why I said Liquid Starlight. You'll definitely not regret having some. Um, it's all going to fit right here perfectly. And then all I have to do now is make this upgrade, and then we can already upgrade to the top tier. Like, we really just have to do, like, two infusions, and we're ready to go. So we definitely have enough Starlight, but like I said, we can always use our linking tool. And we can boost this. I think this is as high as it's going to go at the moment. But like, all I have to do is take this and click it onto there. And that light will go into it. And you can see it definitely max that, which is absolutely insane. Like the amount of starlight we're getting from this. So we can go ahead and craft this. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. Like I said, each time we upgrade the altar, the crafts, when we actually do the crafts, they just look so much better. Music is so pretty as well. This mod is definitely growing a lot. Like Hellfire and his team has done an amazing job with this mod. And there we go. Perfect. Now, all we have to do is place this down right here. And the big thing that we are going to be infusing is Aquamarine. So we need to take Aquamarine and we can place that down in here. All we have to do is hit it with the resonating wand. And so long as we have liquid starlight surrounding, Oh, even this animation has changed, and it looks so good. Those particle animations. Like, I bet that took a while. Like, that's... Those particle animations are fancy. Then we can do it again. Um, hopefully it's, uh, like, you can do more of these per needing starlight, because I remember that was a big thing, is it would always consume a lot of starlight every time you did this. But yeah, as of right now, it seems... Like it works pretty well. And I think that's all we really need. So we need four of them to upgrade. And we need a Celestial Crystal. Which our Celestial Crystal, I believe, is almost done. It's over here. Not fully done. But once it's done, we'll be able to progress even further. This one's also not done. But the more it stays in the night, I believe, the quicker it will go. We might even be able to accelerate it with our bottle. Can we? I don't know. Usually it gives off particle effects, like when they're fully grown. Oh, that did do something. Oh, it is working. Oh, oh, there it goes. And that's particle effects right there. So when we break this. Ooh, we actually got like double our Stardust back, I think. But now we have a Celestial Crystal. And the Celestial Crystal is the exact thing that we need in order to upgrade our altar. Hey, looky there, this is actually done. So this is that special kind of crystal that I was talking about. So 5% increase to max life, 7% increase to critical strike chance. And we should be able to slot that inside of our perks here. So we do have that gym slot right here. Right click to choose the gym. Okay, it says right click to choose the gym from your inventory. And that's the one. And I socketed that. And now it's active. Pretty nice. And I think we can, of course, change these out. Um, but yeah, you can unlock more and more and like have different perks in those slots. Very, very reminiscent to Path of Exile. I believe that may be where it's influenced from. I don't know. I, I'm, like I said, I think Dota also does that, but I'm not really, I've not really played that game. Um, I also wanted to mention, um, last episode I talked about getting these constellation papers. I totally missed the fact that there's tabs here for all the different recipes for the five different base ones. I am a total derp that I missed. I missed these. And I thought there was only one recipe and I was like, why am I only getting the one recipe? Yep, that's why, because there's multiple tabs and I, did. <laughs> I didn't realize that. But anyways, we're gonna be upgrading to the max tier altar. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, look at the ground. Oh man, super pretty. I love all these new particle effects and stuff. Of course, this this has been around for a while, but man, Seeing some of these new, like, particle spinning animations is just, like, oh, super nice. And this one, I think, takes a, just about as long as all the other ones. And then we have this super crazy looking, like, altar, right? And now, the upgrade to this one isn't as crazy as you might think. Um, so, the altar itself, right here, isn't, like, super ridiculous as far as, like, upgrading. Um, let's see, I think we gotta go back. And so we go back to this one, and I believe this one had the upgrade to it. Yes, right here. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty much the same exact setup, same setup. 
All we got to do now is add the roof part to it. And that's all that this thing needs. It just needs this roof bit. And that's basically the same altar. So with it built, this is what it should look like. And there should be a little floaty crystal flare thing here. It used to actually be a crystal. Now it's like a little floaty ball of light, which is super cool. Um, but these are still helping fuel this thing. But as you can see, it definitely isn't full enough. Um, but over here is a constellation kind of chart thing that we're going to be using later on down the line because this altar gets a bit co more complicated as far as crafting recipe goes. But believe me, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. None of this is honestly hard to wrap your head around. Um, so I want to try and set these up like over here. I don't think this is going to matter. Yeah, no, that still works. Still goes right through. It doesn't really matter what's above it. I just want to change where these are located just for right now, uh, because we need all of this platform, all this room here for doing crafts. Um, now I do, however, do, I do want to get this set back up. I want this to definitely be used. So let's go ahead and place this. I'll place this here and then we'll link this back together to this and then link this to this. That way we'll definitely have some light. Oh, I didn't actually want, I don't want it beam directly into it. Don't want that to happen. So I, I do want this just placed here and going into this. Let's see if I can get this linking tool to not break. Okay, unlink, relink this, and then link that to that. Then unlink, there we go. So yeah, so we do have a lot of starlight, not completely full. We may need more of these. And also it's not 100% nighttime, it is going down. So this actually might be close to full. So next night, I want to see if I can show you guys how one of these crafting recipes work. So I figured the best thing to craft is probably going to be the star and the star that we actually need for this recipe here. Um, so the whole reason we got into Astral Sorcery was to make this thing that we're about to make. So to do this, uh, we're going to have to have a crystal that is attuned to the proper constellation that we need. And that is actually Visio, um, which is kind of nice. I even have a crystal that is Visio focused that I ended up finding that was in the inventory. Um, I think it just it was a random drop, um, but it went up when we actually turned it into a celestial crystal. And I don't want to tune myself to this. I want to attune this to Visio, and just absolutely beautiful. Like this is so cool looking. I mean, just crazy. Beautiful particle effects. And yeah, once that's done, it should spit it out. And then we can actually use that for the, the actual crafting ritual itself. And voila. There we go. Picked it up. Perfect. So let's head over here. And because we know that constellation's in the sky, we should be able to put this inside this slot. Right here. Where is it at? That should go in here, and it sets the actual constellation. You can see it on the ground. That's how you're going to define what constellation goes where. And if you see this little sign up here, tells you what constellation you need. Um, and you can also see that at the moment it is set to Visio. Um, so that's what we're need to craft this whole thing. But first we have another craft that we need to get done first. And uh, that is going to be crafting the actual shifting star right here, which is going to need a bucket of starlight. Okay. I think this is just about it. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'm trying to hurry so I can get it all done before the night cycle ends. But there we go. There's our shifting star. And then I think the last thing we need is this. And then we also have some other stuff you see right here. Illumination powder, a uh, feather, stardust. So we need two feathers, two stardust, two um, illumination powder. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place these down like that. And then um, it's going to request as we go to craft this, it's actually going to request the things that we need. So let's go ahead and do this and get this started. This is how these crafts work. They are pretty awesome. We're going to see a projection, though, of the items needed as it starts to, to go. Oh, boy. So right here, it's showing it needs a feather. So we just give it a feather. Over here, it's showing we need an illumination powder. So we give it illumination powder. It needs star metal. Star dust. <laughs> I'm running a little bit behind on this. I should probably go ahead and make some. Oh boy, get that out of her hand. 
Wow. Why is that doing that? There we go. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> it's not like we have a like a time limit other than it being like the night. That's our only time limit. And then over here is a feather. And then another illumination powder. Last but not least, a stardust. And then this crazy craft comes together. It's just beautiful. Like this is absolutely gorgeous. And there's the item that we need right there. So all of that over the last two episodes to get this a radiant star. And that's one of just many items that we need for this creative essence. It, it's yeah, not not really creative essence, but to get the oblivion star. That's one of the things that we needed. Everything else is actually pretty easy to get. Now for one last craft right before the end of the episode, I definitely want to get this done. So I want to make myself an illumination wand. This is going to require a shifting star, which is nothing too difficult to make. Um, all we got to do, we I mean, we literally just made a shifting star. So like this is not difficult um, and should make fairly quickly. We're going to use this, however, to make the illumination wand and the illumination wand is honestly one of my favorite things from this mod. Um, there are, of course, many things that I love from this mod, but this is just one of several. And this thing is so useful, so useful. So if you want to stylize lights and you no longer want to use lights like this anymore, which are kind of laggy, use these. They definitely don't cause, I've not found that they cause as much performance hits. Um, this just drops like a bunch of particles and it just, I think they stay around too long. And so these particles definitely are a little bit better. Um, now getting rid of them is not the same. You don't punch them. You do have to place a block in their place to get rid of them. Um, but still like definitely worth using, even though in our base, lights are sort of sort of disappearing. Like we don't really need torches. I am using a different method for lights and I'm using a lot more of these feral lanterns, just keeping them away from my mob farm. I even have a way of preventing mobs um, because I think this only goes up about 20 blocks. But down here, I have a mega torch and I made sure to place it lower in the world so that way my mob farm would still work up top. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, I think that's just about it for today's episode, which is pretty awesome. I'm glad we got through Astral Sorcery so quickly and like, it's not a hard mod. I want to just like emphasize the fact that this mod is not hard to get into and there are some really great benefits to getting into this mod. So without further ado, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video and that is going to go to Gordon2015. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on Patreon going above and beyond. I really do appreciate you. Man, it really does go a long ways. Guys, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Of course, in there, you'll find tons of information about what Patreon is um, in that link. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Of course, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.